Well, hi again, everyone. Welcome to WKYC.com, Facebook Live, and YouTube. I'm Dave DiNatale. That is Tyler Carey, and this is our high school football preview show for 2020. It will not be, it will be like unlike any other season we have ever covered before, but Tyler, we're going to do it, and uh, COVID or no COVID, uh, we will start our season tomorrow, Friday night, in Aurora, and uh, we're going to have all sorts of fun this year. One way or the other, we're going to do this thing. Yes, Dino, I got to tell you, I really had my doubts, um, even just last month, that this was going to happen. I I think some people still have doubts, and that's reasonable, considering the, the situation that we're currently in. But the schedule's there. We have games that will take place this Friday night. Again, going to be a lot different with the formats and how things will work. But football's football, and you and I both love high school football in this region so much, and I know we're both very excited. Yeah, this has been, even this week, Tyler, because there have been schools in Cuyahoga County, two big ones, in fact, in Strongsville and then more recently Mayfield that have had COVID-19 test results come back positive for members of the team. And in Mayfield's case, they've kind of suspended things indefinitely. Uh, Strongsville, at least for week one, North Olmstead's another one. So there, there, there's been uncertainty, but uh, I, I think it starts with the top with Governor DeWine and, and Lieutenant Governor uh, Houston. I think he's been a, a real big supporter of all this and the coaches, and the athletic directors, and the players, and their families, um, almost like by force of will, we're going to do this thing. Yeah, I, I certainly give um, everybody credit for getting a plan together to decide to try to get us a season. Um, obviously, the, the first concern is always going to be kids' health, people's health, everyone's health. Um, you hear about positive tests in Strongsville and elsewhere, and, and, and certainly it makes you it makes you nervous. It scares you, and it should scare anybody. And because we don't know what the long term health effects of this are, but we know that unfortunately this is something for the moment that we're going to have to deal with. And it seems like a lot of these kids do. They know the risks, and a lot of them have said yes, we know, and we still want to play. And I give them credit for that. That is their choice. Anyone who does not want to play, that's fine. Um, I am happy. The biggest difference this year is obviously going to be no fans in the stands. We miss, we're going to miss the atmosphere. Well, I should say limited fans in the stands. Parents will be there. The bands will be there. But the lack of the packed stadiums, we understand why. Certainly going to be bizarre to watch. Um, and then just the sheer amount of games and the playoffs, how that's going to work. I mean, it's going to be... It, it, I, I will not call it like, oh, this is a fake season. It certainly isn't. But like you said, it's going to be something unlike we've ever seen before. Yeah, right now, um, if, if you're kind of just getting yourself ready here for the season, what we're talking about, the OHSA put forth basically there's going to be a six-week regular season starting tomorrow night. Um, and for those teams that aren't ready to play, like St. Ignatius, for example, they haven't started yet. Uh it doesn't matter. Everybody's going to have an, an opportunity to get to the postseason, and then we kind of see what happens after that. It really becomes then kind of a free-for-all tournament style. Um, but that's the plan right now. Six weeks of a regular season, almost like six weeks of a, of a preseason, I feel like, Tyler, before we actually get to the playoffs. Um, we'll get to our game in a second. It's going to be uh, two division champs from last year, two in, in the Suburban League, two tremendous programs, two great coaches. Um, give us a snapshot. You've done a lot of research here um, now that we know kind of who's playing and who's not. Um, who are going to be the teams that we're going to be really watching here this year um, in Northeast Ohio in 2020? Well, um, I, I hate to get boring here, but the usual suspects, as you could imagine. Um, I was talking to you before the show about uh, Maslin, um, how they came oh so close to winning the state championship. They're first in the playoff era last year. They did not do it, but they lost some players, but they're as loaded as ever this year. Um, I would say their top player, Jaden Ballard, who we saw last year as a junior, he's a senior this year, rated as one of the top five wide receivers in the country. 
not just Ohio, not just Northeast, but the country. That's why he's going to Ohio State. They've got other guys like Andrew Will- Andrew Wilson Lamp, Terrence Ranko on the line, um, a few transfers in from Bucknell that just make this again a stacked roster. Um, right now, I think they're the best team in in Northeast Ohio, perhaps the state. Um, elsewhere, Archbishop Hoban, you know that they just reload like they always do. Um, I'll be interested to see what Menor does this year. They did lose a few players from last year's really good team that heartbreakingly lost in the state semifinal, and obviously they lost their longtime leader. Steve trevisano has gone for the first time in about three decades. And <laughs> beyond that, it's, again, Canton McKinley. you got to keep an eye on them as always. St. Edwards, St. Ignatius. Um, Kirtland, I did see, is going to be playing a Division I school for the first time um, that I can remember. They're playing Shaker Heights in Week 2. And they're yeah. two-time defending state champions in Division Five, so they were the only Northeast Ohio team to win a state title last year. So, you know how every season there's that one team that sneaks up on you. But I think if you if you look at the top teams in the region right now, and you're not looking at the ones we would expect, then you're just you're fooling yourself at this point. Couple of marquee matchups to keep an eye on uh, that we'll be watching tomorrow night. Certainly, in addition to our game, I mean. The the aforementioned Maslin, the aforementioned St. Edward, they will clash tomorrow. Uh, The Matt Gray era will begin for Menor. They've got to go down to Medina to play the Bees and Larry Laird. That's never uh, an easy trip. That'll be interesting to kind of see because I think Medina, um, we'll see them as the the season progresses. I'll see how Larry Laird kind of has them, uh, especially on their offense, going. Um, and the, the Battle of the Railroad Tracks in Lorain County, the Battle of, uh, of Route 83, Avon and Avon Lake will meet tomorrow. Um, that Welcome back, be- football. How about yeah. that? Yeah. What a way to bring it back. I mean, it, it's going to be interesting. It, it reminds me a little bit of how Major League Baseball is this year, where, oh, how can you get that much of a sample size in only 60 games? In this case, it's only six. And that's why I, I am glad that the playoffs have been expanded. That is going to be weird for some people because they're going to say, this isn't basketball. Why is everyone making the tournament? Um, I think you hit the nail on the head earlier. This is almost like a preseason, like a tune-up to for when the games actually matter because the regular season is, I don't want to say meaningless because you're still going to have the seeding purposes. You still want to beat Avon or Avon Lake if you're either of those two teams. But you realize that, okay, we're going to make the playoffs. As long as we're in tip-top shape when we get to the playoffs, that's all that matters. If we are as good as we think we are, we're going to beat anybody. And it's going to create a different dynamic, an interesting dynamic. But I'm, I'm anxious to see how it works, how it looks to us and other fans um, in the area. Yeah. Now, our game of the week, um, and, and just to, to explain something, because of all of this craziness, and, and, and we've got our story now at WKYC.com that Tyler put together for us, because of all this COVID craziness, some schools are, are in, some are not in, in terms of playing or remote learning or hybrid learning, uh, we're not going to do the poll this year, you know, where we, have, we ask people to vote on where we're going to go. We will bring that back in 2021 when we're all back and and a season is kind of like what we can expect. So we're taking the liberty of picking the games here this season. And I hope you trust our ability to do so. Um, We've got a great one here though, tomorrow night at veteran stadium in Aurora, uh, two division champs in the suburban league. You've got the Brexville Broadview Heights bees and the Aurora green men. Um, Aurora came this close to advancing to the state championship game in division three. And I would imagine Martin Poder's team, the bees are still thinking about that night at Bedford and how they let that game against Benedictine uh, 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 go away from them. Because that, you know, we saw that game last year. It was one of the best we had all year, but uh, that was one the bees had and they they let slip away. Yeah. You and D-man Dennis Maniloff were were there. And even just me listening to it back in the studio was incredible. Um, to in some way witness that showdown. Um, I mentioned teams sneaking up on you. That was what Brexville Broadview Heights was last year. Um, they come off a disastrous 0-10 season. And I think a lot of people kind of wrote them off. Oh, they're just 
at best, this will be a rebuilding year. They'll make improvements, but they're not going to really be a threat. They go seven and three. They nearly beat Benedictine and they win that game. Who knows what can happen beyond that? And they've got a quarterback, Joey Labus, who I believe in the rankings, the ratings would suggest this is probably the best quarterback in Northeast Ohio. He's, he's a big 10 recruit uh, headed to Iowa. Going to I mean, Iowa. Yeah. He, yeah. So, I mean, he, he's, he put up, you know, video game numbers last year and on the surface, this looks like great offense, Brexville, great defense, Aurora. Don't sell Aurora's offense short. Aurora's got themselves a nice quarterback in and more, and they run the football well. They play keep away. They they control the clock, and they can score points too. And uh, yes, you know they can. As we said, they came so close um, to getting out of that Division Three meat grinder and getting into the state championship game last year. Um, they're going to be hungry, and a lot of people think that you know this is. Let's put it this way. You know, there there have been people who I think have picked already the bees to win this game. And a lot of people in Aurora are like, hey, wait a minute. You know, we may have lost guys, too, but, you know, we're a pretty good team. And, and I remember seeing when I saw Aurora last year, um, thinking that maybe they were a year away from mm-hmm. being elite. Um, they grew up quickly and, and they think that they're this is this is their next uh, level here is to move themselves to state championship contention. No, you're not kidding. And Aurora is a team. We talk about teams that reload every year. Aurora is just one of those teams that it seems like every year they lose guys, but they just bring new guys in and they compete. And even in a quote unquote down year, which I don't think this year will be, they're a very competitive team. And you mentioned people thinking, oh, they were a year away. And yet that looked like one of Bob Mahalik's, maybe his best team since winning the state championship all those years ago and you're right it was a meat grinder meat grinder in division three they lost that heartbreaking double overtime game to another uh local team in mansfield who barely lost in the title game and i gotta think they're motivated i gotta think they've been remembering that ever since that night back in november and this is step one this is even though the season isn't how they envisioned this is the first step to taking that journey to another state championship. And I really do think you're right. They have the talent to do it. Yeah. So you've got uh, Division II Brexville, Division Three Aurora, two great programs. Again, it'll be it'll look different. It may even sound a bit different with not as many fans, but it's still going to be high school football. Week one of our game of the week, Brexville, Broadview Heights at Aurora tomorrow night. We'll get our coverage started a little bit before seven o'clock, about six fifty or so. And while I'm giving you the play by play, Tyler will be updating us with scores from around the area. And uh, we'll also have a, a post game wrap as well. So we've got a lot of um, we're, we're going to make this as fun for you, the fans, because we know a lot of you aren't able to go. We're going to make this as fun as we can for you to experience uh, the, the joy of high school football as much as Tyler and I love to experience it. Absolutely. Dino, it's going to be, there's an opportunity here for us. We were talking about this all week. It, we're so sad that fans won't get to go to the game. Most fans won't get to go to the games like they used to, because speaking for myself, when I was in high school, I loved going to those Twinsburg games every Friday night. Yeah. So we want to try to give you the best experience possible so you can experience this game in some way, shape, or form. I know you've talked to people from Aurora and they are over the moon that we're going out there tomorrow night, um, that they can listen to their kids battle on what's going to be a fantastic showdown, I believe. I'm sure Brexfield feels the same way. Um, Again, we've used this word how many times in this broadcast? It'll be different, but the game is still the same. The thrill is still the same. And in the end, nothing's going to take away anything from whoever wins on Friday night and whoever goes on to win the title when all said and done. Yeah. So that kind of sets the stage for you again, uh, WKYC.com, the WKYC app will also be on Facebook live and will be on YouTube tomorrow night, high school football week. Number one, the bees and the green men for Tyler Carey. I'm Dave Natali. Thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you tomorrow from Aurora. The 